the Dallas Stars boast possibly the best depth in the National Hockey League, and it shows night after night. But can it be enough to carry them to a Stanley Cup? Your Locked On Stars, your daily podcast on the Dallas Stars. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Howdy, Stars fans, and welcome back to another episode of Locked On Stars, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every single day. It's a pleasure to be with you. I'm Joey Erickson, former producer of 105 Through the Fan and play-by-play voice of the Chippewa Steel. Please be sure to subscribe. We are free and available wherever you get your podcast and on YouTube. And as always, thank you so much for making us a part of your day and making us your first listen. Happy Friday, Stars fans, and happy March Madness. I hope your brackets are still intact as we speak. It's been March Madness for the Dallas Stars, especially during this five-game homestand, which wraps up tonight against the Pittsburgh Penguins. We will preview the Pens, who unfortunately will likely miss the postseason this year. We'll also play shooting stars, so get those picks in the comment section below. Let me know who will be the MVP of tonight's game. But we must talk about the Dallas Stars' greatest strength this season. It's their depth. They have some of the best depth we've seen in years, in decades, and it has been glorious. They score a ton, but can it outweigh some of their weaknesses, such as goaltending, such as defense, to get them to their ultimate goal? We'll have to wait for the answer in the postseason, but it feels like that's where we stand currently. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's 200 bucks. If your bet wins, visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. And we will start with some conversation on all the depth up front for the Dallas Stars this season. And it's started to rear its head, especially lately with the emergence of Craig Smith who has scored in three straight games. Radek Foxa, who's picked up some points lately and has a couple of goals in the past few weeks. Even Sam Steele, who's gone quiet over the past month, but don't forget about all his contributions this season. 20 points in 65 games. He was in and out of the lineup to begin the year and has proven and solidified himself as an everyday player in this lineup, which is a great sign for the Dallas Stars moving forward. And of course, you add on Logan Stankoven, who's had such a rise early in his NHL career with six goals in 12 games to begin his National Hockey League career. So there are so many names and so many different players to touch on for the Dallas Stars this season. But none really stand out or shine amongst the rest in terms of league notoriety or scoring races, right? If you look at the Dallas Stars, their two leading scorers have 26 goals apiece, and that's Rope Hintz and Wyatt Johnston. That isn't even in the top 30 of the National Hockey League this season, but they do have six players that have reached the 20-goal mark this season. They are the only team within the National Hockey League to have that, and they're about to get a seventh member with Mason Marchment, and that only seems like a matter of time with Tyler Sagan jumping back into the mix. And oh yeah, Tyler Sagan already has over 20 goals this season. He may have missed nearly a month, but he's got 20 one tallies and they don't even have a 30 goal scorer yet which is pretty remarkable with Jason Robertson who of course almost had 50 last season but he's dried up in that department a bit and who knows if the stars are even going to have two 30 goal scorers Henson Johnston might get there Robertson has 24 with just 12 games remaining so who knows will the stars even have a 30 (laughs) goal score um that is a a reality that could happen uh by the uh by the end of the season but the the phenomenal thing too is the different variety of 20 goal scorers you have Joe Pavelski right? The elder statesman who's having such a great season, especially on the power play. He leads the stars with 10 power play goals. The only star who has double digits in that category, Matthew Shane, 
who's had a bit of a resurgence, and I haven't said it in a while, but Matthew Shane is the best value in the National Hockey League. 59 points in 68 games this season. And unfortunately, Sagan went out because Duchesne was a point-per-game player <laughs> when Sagan was on his line. Then you have the young guns in Wyatt Johnston and Rope Hintz, who are going to be a part of your future forever. And then Sagan, of course, who's turned into kind of an elder state as well just the the variety of different types of players you have within that group of 20 goal scores is truly truly fantastic and the stars are getting contributions up and down the lineup and the great thing about their depth is the interchangeable parts Ty Delandre has jumped in and has had some big moments when Craig Smith goes out of the lineup, Stan Steele jumps in. Logan Stankoven just jumped in in February and hasn't missed a beat from playing in the American Hockey League. That is the type of play that can win you a lot of hockey games, and it certainly has this season. But we have documented that the Stars have outscored some of their problems this season. I mean, they're averaging over three and a half goals per game, and they give up here and around three goals per game this season because on a lot of nights, they don't get phenomenal goaltending, at least in the last month or so. And we saw pre-All-Star break, the defense was really, really shoddy and was pretty leaky in some spots. And they've gone up and down with their PK, but it's mostly been above league average this season. The power play has picked up here as of late. So th there are some good characteristics of this Stars team, but this depth can be a real difference maker come playoff time, mainly because you're going to have injuries. You're going to have guys in and out of the lineup. The playoffs and postseason are gruesome. Guys are going to get banged up, and you just have to have players waiting in the wings that can make an impact. All great teams have good players sitting in the rafters. Whether they're on the LTIR, which we won't get into, <laughs> or they're a healthy scratch, all great teams have good players on the bench or are healthy scratched on some nights. Look at the Texas Rangers and baseball's a completely different sport. I understand, but Travis Jankowski just sat on the bench for a lot of the year and played in huge moments down the stretch and played in huge moments in the biggest games of the year. And they win a world series. You can date back to Tampa Bay when they beat the Stars in the Stanley Cup. And some of it was LTIR as well, but Steven Stamkos, who's a world-class player, and he was injured for really the entire playoffs, just played the one game and he scored, right? Like, you just have to get contributions from guys. It doesn't matter who. It doesn't matter when. But the Stars have this strength that I think can really, really outweigh a lot of their issues come playoff time and their defense I think is not going to be as big as a problem when the postseason begins because Miro is going to elevate his play he's known to elevate his play 45 points in 66 career playoff games Thomas Harley should be just fine Tanev and Lindell will continue to gain chemistry and hopefully Niels Lundqvist will stay in the lineup after that incredible game a few days ago with a couple of assists. By the way, he's okay. He had to get some stitches after taking that puck up high late in the third period against Arizona, but he did skate yesterday. So all good news for Niels Lundqvist. So really you're left with, can the goaltending step up? And I have to say, if it's not going to be Jake Ottinger, I still feel very confident in Scott Wedgwood because he gives the Stars a chance to win on most nights. The numbers are nowhere near a top 10 goalie in the National Hockey League, but all it takes is for him to get hot. All it takes is for Jake Ottinger to get hot. And we all know 
what goaltenders can do come playoff time. They are a great, a great equalizer. Look at Bobrovsky last season and the incredible run he had. But you look at the team in front of him, and arguably the team that has the best depth in the National Hockey League in the Florida Panthers. Nobody that really shines, even though Reinhardt's having an incredible season. Kachuk, once again, just doesn't matter. He's going to be great. But other than that, it's just a bunch of really good hockey players that play as a team. And the Stars offense certainly plays as a team. They've had a slump here and there throughout the year, but for the most part, they can score at will. And they've scored the second most goals in the National Hockey League. They are second in goals per game. They have no issues finding the back of the net. And hopefully, it can carry them as far into the postseason as possible. And hopefully, you get a run out of Jake Ottinger or Scott Wedgwood. And this defense really does figure it out. And this team is going to be so dangerous. So dangerous. We're just waiting for it to come all together. And the last two games against the Kings in Arizona is a nice step in the right direction. But can it become a trend? Can they be peaking at the right time? But it it really has been an incredible season just with the amount of guys that the Stars have had. And they've dealt with injuries this year. More injuries than they have in the past two seasons, frankly, and they just haven't really missed a beat. Even when Sagan was out, it really hindered Duchesne and Marchment, but it's not like the offense as a whole fell out of the sky. (laughs) They were still extremely good because of Johnston, who's picked it up. And I've said this multiple times throughout the year. It just seems like each trio has had their moments of being the top line this season. Besides the the fourth line to some degree, because they are limited in their offensive talent, but when they can contribute, it's icing on the cake. But the top line of Hintz and and Robo and Pavelski at the beginning of the year were were phenomenal. Marchment and Sagan, they have been really the best line consistency-wise throughout the year, besides the last month when Sagan was out, and then Johnston, Stankoven, and Ben have just taken over the world lately. (laughs) Um, It it just feels like it doesn't matter, and they're going to be really, really tough to play against because there's not one line you can key in on. And for the first time heading into a postseason, the Stars have that advantage where teams could be like, okay, we just we got to stop 16, 24, and 21. Really, let's just stop 21. Or let's just stop hints tonight. And if we can do that, we'll take our chances with the other lines. You can't take your chances anymore. You cannot take your chances because, oh yeah, you got Matt Duchesne. You get Sagan, who has over 20 this year. Oh, don't forget about Wyatt Johnston. Yeah, he's just a, a sophomore, but... He's the hottest player on the Dallas Stars heading into the playoffs. <laughs> um, yeah, they, they got some pieces, and um, it's a good spot to be. But, uh, of course, all things have to come together, and um, we'll see if it does outweigh their problems when it really matters. For, for the most part this season, it has. <laughs> I mean, they're uh, up in the conversation. They've been in the top three of the Central Division all year long. Uh, but will it prove to be enough when it matters most? The uh, We'll have to wait for that answer, but I'm certainly excited for it. So, yeah, always nice to boast uh, about all the four depth up front. They could use some more depth on the back end. Chris Tanev helped, uh, but um, hopefully that all writes itself as uh, the postseason approaches. Anyways, let's get into the final game of this five-game homestand for the Dallas Stars, a chance to go three and two during this stretch. And they take on Sidney Crosby in the Pittsburgh Penguins. We'll do that in just a moment. Today's episode of Locked on Stars is brought to you by ND. No matter how the last game went and any time you take the field, you've got a shot at greatness. Give your team the best shot at winning by recruiting more MVPs with Indeed. If you're hiring, you need Indeed because Indeed is the hiring partner where you can attract, interview, and hire all in one place. 
And Indeed is the only job site where you're guaranteed to find quality applicants that meet your must-have requirements or else you don't pay. Instead of spending hours on multiple job sites hoping to find candidates with the right skills, you need one powerful hiring partner that can help you do it all. Indeed partners with you on every step of the hiring process. Find great talent through time-saving tools like Indeed Instant Match, assessments, and virtual interviews. Indeed makes it easy to hire great talent. Go ahead. Use the number one job site in the world. Start hiring right now with a $75 sponsored job credit to upgrade your job at postindeed.com slash locked on. Offer valid through March 31st. Go to indeed.com slash locked on to claim your $75 credit before March 31st. Indeed.com slash locked on. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire. You need Indeed. Sorry that segment went uh, a little long uh, than than usual, but man, sometimes you get me going. I can just go on for, for days. <laughs> hey, be sure to check out Locked On Sports today as well. It's a free 24-7 streaming sports channel. It is on YouTube as well as free Amazon Fire TV. It's on the channel's app. So go ahead and check out Locked On Sports today. Hit the subscribe button on Locked On Stars. You can follow me on X, Joy the Jet 19. Hit uh, the follow button on Locked On Stars on X as well. Plenty of stuff being thrown out there on an everyday basis. Uh, I'll be back to broadcasting tomorrow and or tonight, I should say, and tomorrow. So um, no live updates or, or live tweeting, which I sometimes do. I don't really live tweet, but I throw my thoughts out there uh, because uh, I'm back in the booth here this weekend, which I'm excited for. The, the team I, I'm with is in a playoff push as well. They're one point out of a playoff spot. So a couple of wins would be great uh, this season. A win tonight for the Stars would be great taking on the Pittsburgh Penguins, who are 30-29-9 and nine this season. They're coming off a 5-2 loss to New Jersey, uh, which, uh, of course, is no bueno. And they've fallen really out of the playoff race in general. The final spot in the Eastern Conference is held by Detroit at 76 points. Detroit and Washington have, like, flip-flop because... They can't win. (laughs) It's not the the most electrifying race, but uh, Pittsburgh's out of it by seven points and will more than likely miss it. But they've gotten an incredible year out of Sidney Crosby once again, a point-per-game player. He's got 33 goals (laughs) on the season, 69 points. Of course, they they traded one of their elite wingers and uh, against all, to Carolina at the trade deadline. So it's kind of the old guard and some new with Crosby, Malkin, and they brought in Carlson in the offseason, who's who's had a, a really, really good season once again, but just have not put it together. They really lack depth, <laughs> something that uh, the Stars certainly had the advantage. And Tristan Yari, uh, who's uh, played some really good games against the Stars in his career, uh, has been a workhorse in 48 games, 19, 23, and 5, 905 save percentage, 2.84 goals against average. Nadelkovic is their backup, but uh, they're pretty top end heavy. Um, they're they're below average in, in goals for the power play, it has really taken a tick down. They're just operating at 14% this season, which is kind of crazy with. The guys they have <laughs> with Carlson, who's an elite power play specialist. We all know what Crosby can do and Malkin, but it, it's just been a, a tough go around in, in special teams on that side of the puck. Their PK is still pretty good, 80%, which is right around league average. But uh, it's it's a team that's just uh, really struggled to, to get any sort of contributions from other players that are, are frankly not named Crosby, Malkin, and Carlson. <laughs> it just hasn't been uh, a great season for them, unfortunately, with uh, all the stars they have. And uh, the stars should be able to hopefully take advantage. Their seventh place in the uh, Metro Division. Stars are trying to build off what has been two successful nights, of course. They've won two straight games. Hopefully, Niels Lundqvist returns to the lineup. He played such a great game the other night. I didn't get to mention this because hockey stat cards was fumbling here after the game uh, yesterday, but 
uh, on, on Wednesday, I should say. Niels Lundqvist finished with the highest game score on the night, 2.68 was his game score his offensive impact 0.15 but here's the kicker his defensive impact plus 1.01 he's been a solid player this season and if you take a look at his card in general he's plus an offensive rating 1.4 he's plus in defensive rating at 2.6 he's just a good hockey player He's a good hockey player, and he deserves to be in the lineup. <laughs> and I hate to say it's fortunate that Hockenpah's out of the lineup or at least was dealing with a lower body injury a few days ago because then you're forced to put Niels Lundqvist in. And if he plays like that, the Stars are going to be forced, and Pete DeBoer is going to have to keep him in the lineup because he is an asset. He's an offensive weapon. And it's just another depth piece, a better depth piece than Yanni Hockenpah that the Stars can deploy come playoff time. And like I said on yesterday's episode, if all hell breaks loose and Niels Lundqvist is completely out to lunch in the first few games or game one, whatever it is, then throw Hockenpah in there. But I've mentioned it a lot of times this season. I feel like you're missing out on your highest potential by not having him in the lineup. You're missing out not having the best team, which is possibly your best team. And potential's potential. It all matters. It's it's all relative speaking, right? You, you have to get the job done um, at the end of the day. I, I, I completely understand that, but uh, it just feels like you're missing something with him not in the lineup. I think you're stronger defensively with him in the lineup. It's not even an offensive thing. I just think you're stronger defensively, which has been a very, very well-documented struggle this season for, for lots of reasons <laughs> with, with some of the pairings. And uh, I think just throwing him into the mix um, is, a, is a great thing for the Stars. I don't know. Sue me. Sue me. But uh, anyways, you can check out the hometown broadcasts with Sirius XM. Just go to the SXM app and search star. 7 o'clock puck drop tonight at the American Airlines Center. Feels like a big one, though. Stars and Penguins have not met since back in October, and the Stars won convincingly 4-1 to one in that matchup. I feel like the Stars have done pretty decent against the Penguins at home in, in recent years I, I could be way off on that but they, they they've always seemed to be good games at least well most of the home games this year for the stars <laughs> have been good games they've played a, a lot of a lot of uh one goal games uh at home for uh for a multitude of reasons some of them shouldn't even be one goal games but the stars have a flair for the dramatic right i have a flair for the dramatic and that's why we're going to get into shooting star who is going to be the MVP tonight? The shooting star for the Dallas Stars. So many choices. Put your answer in the comment section below. I'll tell you mine in just a moment. Today's episode of Locked on Stars is brought to you by FanDuel. And it feels right, Stars fans, because your bracket may be busted. Look, the first few days are really tough with all the upsets that are happening, but FanDuel lets you bet on every game of the tourney. So don't worry if you missed a few picks in the first round. Whether you're betting big on that upset or one seat, it's time to go dancing on America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets if your first $5 bet wins. That's 200 bucks to use on point spreads, money lines. You can even pick who's going to win it all. Throw some money on UConn or Houston. Show some love from the city down south and make some money with FanDuel while watching March Madness. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and bet on college hoops until they cut the nets down. Okay. I feel like I've struggled recently, unfortunately with my shooting star picks, but I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid to go out on a limb and bless, bless somebody. I, 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 I use the word bless <laughs> because um, I want the hockey gods to shine down 
on my pick and have a huge impact. And it feels right. And it feels like it goes together with the theme of the Dallas Stars episode. It's all about depth. It's all about depth. The Stars have six players with 20 goals this season. The only team in the National Hockey League. And the one player that is closest to that mark to join that group is Mason Marchment. Give me mush tonight. His 20th goal of the season. There you go. Dust it off. Another 20-goal score for the Dallas Stars. Go ahead and book it. Feels like Marchment gets the job done tonight. Love the pick. Love mush. So that's what we're rolling with for tonight's shooting star. Let me know who you're going with tonight in the comment section below. Always love to hear your thoughts. Your engagement is much appreciated, especially over this past week. We've gone through a ton. The Niels Lundquist dilemma, Otter versus Wedgwood, all sorts of stuff. Man, so many great things, but at the same time, you're just always tweaking, right? The stars just feel like they need to tweak a few things, and hopefully they can start playing their best hockey when it matters most. And I would love, I would love to uh, win the central division. Unfortunately, they do not have uh, a lot of the destiny in their own hands because they, they dropped a few, but um, hopefully they get some help for some other teams throughout the, the league and um, they can still have a crack at that number one C that'll do it for today's episode. It is Friday. Enjoy the weekend stars fans. Enjoy stars hockey. Uh, they're in action on Sunday as well as they begin a four game road trip. I'll be able to be on top of that one, which is exciting. So be on the lookout for some more stuff throughout this weekend. Should be a phenomenal time as wind day, uh, as, as usual. Don't know where I was going with that. Have a great rest of your day. We will see you on Monday. Until then, so long, Stars fans.